density is the amount of mass in a volume. Mass is measured in grams, which we denote with a little g. Usually measured on a scale, ancient would have been more like a balance, and volume is measured in milliliters, which we um, denote with a lowercase m and a capital L. We typically measure this in a graduated cylinder, and on a 100 meter graduated cylinder like I have here, all the little lines mean one milliliter. Now, a cubic centimeter is called such because all three sides of it are one centimeter measurements, and so we get one times one times one is a cubic centimeter. A centimeter that's cubed. Here I have a box with five centimeter sides, and so five times five, five, five is 125. And here I have its twin. They have the same volume, and I'm gonna add one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five grams in each. And so each box has the same volume, and the same mass. And so because they have the same amount of mass in the same space, we say that they have the same density. If I put a whole lot more mass in box B, now box B has more mass in that same space, therefore it is more dense. This box is a much larger box with a volume of 10 times 10 times 10 or a thousand cubic centimeters. That's a lot of those little centimeters. So. I started with five grams in this other box, and if I put five of these little grams over here, now they have the same mass, but box B has a whole lot more volume, and box A is more dense because it has less volume or less space. In order to calculate them, we take the mass divided by the volume. So this one cubic centimeter has a mass of 1.04 grams, so its density is 1.04 grams per cubic centimeter. The foam, though, has a whole lot fewer grams, 0.08 grams in that one cubic centimeter space. So we would have 0.08 grams per cubic centimeter, very light. This wooden block has 0.66 grams in its one cubic centimeter. So its density is 0.66 grams per cubic centimeter. And this piece of tungsten has 17.78 grams in its cubic centimeter space, way more mass. So it is a much higher density of 17.78 grams per cubic centimeter, right? Now that density is a constant for a substance. So as I add plastic blocks to this scale, the mass is going to increase proportionate to the volume at the rate of the density. So one block was 1.04, but 10 blocks is 10.03. Now I know you're saying it's not the same, but these blocks aren't 100% perfectly uh, made. So it's pretty darn close. So that substance has that density always. And because it's a constant, we can use it to identify substances. So this block here, 2.6 grams in a cubic centimeter is aluminum, yay. And the density then, because it's a constant, can also be used to identify these substances. And so if I have another block of aluminum, then I should expect that the mass will increase by 2.6 grams for every extra cubic centimeter of volume. And indeed, this block is almost 16 cubic centimeters. So when I do some calculations, the densities are pretty darn close. Again, not perfectly honed blocks. And as the mass increases, the volume increases proportionately, right? Pretty jazzy. Both made of aluminum and they both have the same density measurement. So when we use this unit grams per cubic centimeter, it tells us how much mass the number of grams are in each cubic centimeter of a sample. The more cubic centimeters a sample has, the higher the mass will be. The unit grams per milliliter tells us how much mass is in each milliliter of a sample. Again, the more uh, milliliters we have, usually the more grams. Now, because milliliters is a measurement for liquids, and cubic centimeters is usually a measurement of solids. That's usually what we see the gram per centimeter cubed and the gram per milliliter used for, but they're equivalent to each other because milliliters and cubic centimeters are the same amount of volume. We just see one used for solids typically and one used for liquids typically, but they're interchangeable measurements.